So sub dogs, we hit that 1,000 subscriber, and I said if you guys throw any questions at me, I'll turn it into a Q&A. So, welcome to the Q&A! Jazz hands. But before we get started, I just want to say thank you, thank you so much again for the wonderful and kind comments that you guys uh that you guys commented down below in that video. I just gotta say you are also very nice and oh, thank you. They gave me warm, fuzzy feelings deep down inside. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's that one guy who was like, make more RPG Maker tutorials and tips and, and, and wow, not even asking, demanding. Is that where this day and age has got us? Demanding? No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm sure that you meant all well. I, I, I know you did. So just to straighten that out of the way, because I'm certain that a few other people wants to know if I'm gonna make any more RPG Maker tutorials. And to that, I say, well, if you watch my devlogs, those are basically the uh, tutorials that I'm making now, or like tips and tricks. I guess more they're more like tips and tricks. But at the end of every video, I do mention that if you guys got any questions for me, feel free to ask, and I'll turn it into a video itself. That said, I'm certain that some of you guys also wonder, Theody, your RPG Maker horror puzzle game thingy my whooper was so great. Can you make another one? I love the interactiveness of downloading a file and then piecing it together as we go along. And to that, I can say is, well, uh, sure. <laughs> the only problem is, what in particular would you like to see? Because. In the series that I made already, I go behind theory, I go behind the entire use of the ARM engine, I go behind the basics to the advance. So, um, okay, maybe not the advance, more like intermediate slash getting towards advance. So, if I did make something, then it literally just be a remake of what's already there. It's just gonna follow the same rubric, but have a uh, well, like different plotline behind it, rather than Jake and whatever the other dude's name was. Important thing is, uh, what would you guys like to see? As long as you guys keep commenting those below, I can uh, gather all the questions together and create a whole new series for you guys. Otherwise, um, in terms of like tips and tricks on the RMMV engine. Well, I thought about making that, but then there's a bunch of YouTubers who already made that sort of thing. Like, one person I know on YouTube is Echo. She makes plenty of tutorials, and she makes plenty of uh, tips and trick videos. I'm sure that the Unpro Pro does too, as well as a few others, but if I were to do my own tips and tricks, well, it'd literally just be the same content, but just in my own words, or like, with my own voiceover, if, if, unless that's what you guys prefer. Oh, one more last thing with RPG Maker. If there's like ever a point where you see a scenario in a game, like say, say you just played The Hanged Man, and you saw a scenario that you guys enjoyed a lot and was like, how do you make that? Then you could just go and be like, hey Viodi, can you can you make a tutorial of of how this game did this scene? Here's a timestamp of a video that did it. Please, please do show me. I'm, I'm a rookie noob. And to that, I'll say, all right, <laughs> I'll do it. I'll be down to do it and it'll be fun. All right, guys, now it's time for the Q&A. So question one, Fernando Para asks, Please consider making a let's play of To The Moon. It's not horror, but made on RPG Maker and kind of as a field train. <laughs> to that, I gotta say, well, Fernando Para, I already played To The Moon and I played it before I created my YouTube channel. And therefore, it's not on my channel. However, if I were to play it again, I feel like it wouldn't, you guys wouldn't see the same reaction as I did in the first time. And obviously, nothing's as good or as bad better or as best as the first reaction so uh yeah i told him that and then he asked maybe finding paradise although i don't know if it's any good finding paradise finding paradise well 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 the heck is finding paradise oh <laughs> Wait a second. Uh -huh. Man, why you gotta cost 10 bucks? 
Okay, next question. Next question is by YouTube user Vale. What's your all-time favorite video game, and what's your current favorite? Oof. Oof. Well, I gotta say that's a really hard question, and I had that question in the back of my mind for the past week. And uh, with it there in the back of my mind, usually I come up with a solution or an idea, but I, I, nope, just nope. So allow me to rephrase your question or break your question down to a few more multiple questions just to help myself out. My favorite video game of all time, of all time, meaning that I am able to just pick it up and play it. Or when someone asks me, "Hey, Theody, would you want to play this?" or if even one of my buddies going like, "Hey, dude, want to play this?" Then to that, I gotta say it is. The Smash series, Smash 4 in particular, because I am a person who who's with the times rather than um, like I know that melee is where all the competitions at, or rather it's the most competitive of them all. But I am a person who likes to move in parallel with time. So if something new comes out, I am always down to play that and get addicted and hooked to that instead. But uh, yeah, Smash 4. And then Smash 5 is coming on December, oh my god, that is so much hype. But, did you guys expect that at all? It's a little odd, I know, but let me tell you a little brief history on Smash and just me growing up. Back when I was a child, maybe when I was 10 or maybe before that, when Blockbuster was still a thing and it was the hype of the hype. Basically, every time I got my weekly allowance, it just went into the renewal of Smash 64. <laughs> That's how good it was for me. Rather than actually saving up my allowance to buy Smash 64, I just kept renewing it instead, which is honestly a terrible idea, being the age that I am now, but at the time, it was all I ever needed, and all I ever wanted. So then Blockbuster ran out of business, and Unfortunately, I couldn't keep Smash 64, although if I did keep Smash 64, I don't think anything would have happened because they ran out of business. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't care at that point. Huh. Guys, don't steal. As I say that, I'm just waiting for Redbox to go out of business. <laughs> so with Blockbuster out of business, and now came the crazy cool PlayStation and the crazy cool Dreamcast. I was still there playing with my N64 and eventually I afforded enough money to buy Smash 64 on the N64. It's a lot of 64s, but at least it's not 69. But hey, I played it like one to two hours every night before bedtime and it was just, it was just my childhood. And it, I never got into Melee unfortunately because I didn't have $60 to buy a video game. <laughs> I had $20, but not $60. But hey, favorite character? Yoshi. Played Yoshi ever since he was on the N64, and I carried on the torch with the Yoshi. With the Yoshi. Then in order for my next, I guess, main after Yoshi would be Link, I Shulk, and then the rest, just no sequence whatsoever. Pikachu, Zelda, Samus, uh, Mega Man, a few others I'm forgetting that's in Smash 4. But those guys are the first ones that come to mind, so definitely a place in my heart somewhere. Anyways, in terms of how good I am, can't say that I'm a zero, can't say that I'm a hungry box. If I were to go to eSport, I'm sure I would get eliminated when in the first bracket. But hey, if we go to Locos, I, I definitely rock some worlds. <laughs> Not to say that the competition here is rather weak, it's pretty solid, but hey, it is a small town, so what can you do? Alright, now as for my favorite game of all time, whether I play it still today, or I played it only once, and if someone were to say, hey, what's, what's that game you remember most, or the game you remember most enjoying? To that, I gotta say, is Legend of Zelda, wait for it, wait for it, Skyward Sword. I know, it's nuts. Being an N64 owner in an N64 was my childhood. I should have said either Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask or maybe with the Breath of the Wild that just came out. I should have said Breath of the Wild. But, but, Breath of the Wild and Skyward Sword spoiler alert! I feel as though in Breath of the Wild, sure, you have all these new mechanics and yes, you can be addicted just because of its gameplay. However, in terms of like, 
story or the drive to save the princess because with Skyward Sword we see the two as childhood friends and we can we can also kind of assume that they're secret lovers but they're childhood friends and we see the sort of struggles in like it could be the fact that it's an origin story so I like it the most but we really get to see Zelda realizing her role in absolutely everything we see the sort of sacrifices that she makes and then we see the sort of sacrifices that Lynx makes, and we see the anguish and the sorrow, and well, the birth of willpower from Link as he pursues to save Zelda. And there's this one scene, this one scene right around the middle of the game. I'm certain that you guys know exactly what scene I'm talking about if you guys seen or played Skyward Sword. You will know exactly what I mean. Actually, yeah, it's a spoiler alert. So, the scene was when Zelda self sacrifices herself to seal herself throughout time, and then Link. And, and, oh, it was just so sad. The expression on Link's face. It's the first time we see that sort of expression on him. And it was just, oof. Hits you right there. <laughs> I mean, sure, in Skyward Sword, we see self sacrifice with every of the other characters. But at the same time, they're, they're kind of just character that gets developed the moment we get onto the map and then it kind of ends when we get off of their map. The other thing about Skyward Sword is that it's not all about the feels between Link and Zelda. It's also the feels between Link and Fi. And I gotta say, ugh, oh, that was just a touching moment too. It's like you beat the game and you think everything's just gonna be happy and then BAM that happened. So it's just like, no. <laughs> oh, I love Skyward Sword. And yes, I did play Majora's Mask. And yes, I did play uh, uh, Ocarina of Time. And for the longest time, it was my favorite game of all time. However, remember what I said about in Smash and being in parallel with times? I feel like Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask kind of outlive its time by just a bit now with what we have today. We got better graphics, we got better, uh, I guess, expressions on the characters, and just like all these other small things that really, really does add up. Certainly, you cannot beat a classic for being a classic, but I don't know, I guess it is what it is. End of spoiler. Alright, now for some extremely honorable mention, Xenoblade Chronicles 1. Such a very, very solid game. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Twilight Princess, Ocarina Time, Majora's Mask, The Elder Scrolls, Oblivion, and Skyrim, and I'm sure that there's a few others that I'm totally missing out on, but those are my extremely honorable mentions. Now for some less extreme but still honorable mentions, the Resident Evil series, part 1 in particular, Kingdom Hearts franchise, and Monster Hunter. By the way, Monster Hunter coming out later this week, yes, absolutely yes, I'm just gonna be playing that nonstop. And hopefully I can upload it to the channel and some of you guys would be interested in that because I am swear it's it's just the game I'm gonna be playing. <laughs> and then RE2 remake in January. Oh my lord, what is this? This next few months is just intense hype. Now for the second question, what is your current favorite game? Well, 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 a game that I'm able to just come to my computer, sit down and well I guess toss up whenever I feel like, that would be Dead by Daylight. As for a game that I play with my friends every now and then, that would be Age of Empire 2. I actually just recently picked that up. Maybe it's just the hype of just recently picking it up again, but I don't know. That's just my current hype at the moment, so uh, yeah. Age of Empire 2 HD Remake. Now, as for my favorite RPG game on the channel, I think my favorite RPG maker game or like wolf engine game that I played on my channel would be The Boogeyman. Now, if we were to exclude Yuri Games because she's OP as hell, I'd say it'd be Delete. I found Delete very, very enjoyable, and it was very, very easy for me to get hooked to the characters and just play it straight from beginning to end, even though, well, even though it was like a few hours. As for some extremely honorable mentions, she, Prom Dreams, Blank Dreams, what is it about dreams? <laughs> Miss Al in anything created by Yuri. Because again, she's OP as hell. Put it right there. Guys, believe it or not, I actually spent so long answering the questions yesterday that my camera overheated and because I was in between doing things that uh, I had to wait until tomorrow to record it. So this is tomorrow, aka the different shirt and missing watch. 
So, on to the final question. Maroon Yaz asks, what made you interested in making RPG Maker games? Well, 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 there's an uber and I mean uber long story to this. But don't worry, I'll give you the short answer first. Short answer is, I've always been a content creator of some sort throughout my life. Be it video making or RPG Maker making. And it kind of transitioned as I grew up in life in... Now that I am that I am, I decided that creating video games was something I could do in my free time, and I enjoy it a lot, so I continue to do it. Now for the uber long story time. It all started back in the days when I was like 10 years old, or maybe 9, somewhere where 9 to 11. And it all started when I found this very cool program on my father's computer called Windows Movie Maker. I'm pretty sure that was for the XP engine, or it first premiered in the XP engine. So when I first went into it, it was me and my brother, and we were looking at the Movie Maker engine, and we and he was like, don't even bother, it's not what you think, just leave. So I did. But, like a week later, or a few days later, I went back into the engine, I looked at it, and I was like, yeah, I know what this is. I see panels, so I'm guessing you have to put something in the first panel and then it transitions to the next panel. So, the very, very first video or the very first content I ever created was when I was like 10 years old and it was a three frame panel, or I guess three image panel. And in the first panel, it was this picture of this guy wearing a cape, hands to his, uh, to his hips, and he was standing on a rock. And there was wind blowing his cape behind him. The best part, oh, the best part of it all, is that I did a little bit of voice acting. And <laughs> uh, the voiceover that I did for my cute little three panel movie is. <clears throat> Bear with me, I was like 10 at the time. <sighs> do, do, do. I'm super dude. <laughs> Here, watch me fly! And then, what would happen next? It was transition into the next panel, and within that panel, we would see Mr. So called Super Dude jumping from his rock in a Superman position, wind still blowing at his cape. I would make my own sound effects as well, so I went whoosh! And throughout that panel, I would hold the whoosh, which would then transition into the next panel. Right then and there, you would hear. Which would indicate a sound effect of crashing. And uh, <laughs> in my third panel, we would see Super Dude lying on the ground, cracks in the floor, because apparently when you fall to the ground, you crack the earth by just a little bit, which also made the sound effect sound more realistic. <laughs> but uh, I would uh, end the video with. <clears throat> Ow! I'm okay. Apparently the owl I'm okay was a joke of the century thanks to Steve Verkel from Family Matters. And uh, yep, that was the first movie I ever made. <laughs> but anyways, anyways, a few years later, I believe it was on RPG Maker 2000 that uh, my brother um, acquired. And uh, we dug into it and when we opened it, well, you know how you guys open MV or whatever engine for the very first time being the age that you are or the age that you first discovered RPG Maker? Well imagine that from the point of view of like an 11 year old or a 10 year old. And uh, yeah, had no idea what was going on. But the uh, first thing I realized was that you could uh, create a map. So that's exactly what I did. I created a map. And then after I created that map, I didn't touch the engine again for like a few weeks or a few months even because, well, I didn't know you could do anything more than create a map on it, being 10 years old, 10 years old after all. But hey, when I went back into that engine, I, uh, I created two islands and there was a boat that would transport you to the next island and at that second smaller island you would face against the skeleton warrior. The only problem was that I didn't know about switches at the time. Again, being only 10 years old, didn't know about variants, and I don't think I really knew about Erase Event either. So what was happening was that I was fighting the skeleton to no end, and, and that really, really 
made me struggle. I was like, why am I still fighting this guy? I defeated you. I want you to go away. God damn it. Yeah. Maybe I was an angsty little kid, but who knows. I, I think I grew up pretty well. So yeah, that happened, and I spent all day working on it, not figuring out how to get rid of that skeleton warrior, and eventually I just dropped it all together. But then a few years later, I decided to uh, acquire Postality Knights. It's, it's Postality Knights is the equivalent of today's Wolf RPG Maker, or Wolf Engine Maker. And Postality Knights was the uh, counterpart to XP. Full name was RPG Maker XP Postality Knights, or Postality Knights XP, one or the other. And basically what happened was that back in the days when RPG Maker XP came out in JP, it took a few years to finally release in the US, or just in English in general. So during that time frame, before it even got announced to be released in the US, developers on like forums, the mad geniuses that they are, they created Postality Knights to uh, give that version to all of us. And that was really cool because it was free and it was on forums. So it was really, really sweet. And I delved deep into Postality Knights and that's what I worked at it for the longest time. And the reason why I got into Postality Knights was because my brother and I just beat it Kingdom Hearts 2. And being the huge fantasy world that it is for like all the little teen kids and even younger and even older it just inspires you to want to create your own worlds or create your own story where you just transport from one location to another fight evil and just do a lot of magnificent stuff so mind you that i was around 13 years old at the time so when i went into postality nights i I actually was more explorative within my um, event commands and I found all these different features and I made it work. <laughs> it took, I, I spent three years, three to five years maybe even, no more like three years into um, this project of mine. It was basically me and my brother who just, I guess, lives stranded on this island, monsters comes to it. We get saved by this old dude who teleports us off, and uh, we eventually meet Garfield and Odie in human form. They were in the other two main characters, a total of four main characters, five if you include the old dude. But yeah, four characters in total, and um, what would happen was after we play as Kevin and my brother Kenneth or Kenny, it transitions into Garfield and Odie in their human forms and apparently they already got saved by the old guy before Kevin and Kenny. So <laughs> they were actually out exploring an entirely new world where they fight monsters and they bumped into Kevin and Kenny and then we for at first conflict but at the end we fight the boss together and we become best friends some way somehow. I guess through the power of same enemies makes us friends or whatever the saying actually is but yeah yeah it was it's it's cute basically all i can say is it's cute i never completed that game and the reason why was that well i fell for the major trap of making a game too long in having um different scenarios in your game where if you choose this one branching part it just splits from the game entirely and it attempts to make it to the same point, but the way I made it branch was too far out that in order to go back together, it would take uh, take quite the amount of time. So uh, yeah, you ever wondered why when you play like a game where you have multiple choices, say The Walking Dead, and when you choose one choice, it only affects it ever slightly, and then the only main difference at the ending. Well, because as it turns out, if you create a game that has two completely different scenarios, then they'll just go in parallel and split into their own directions, and the story will just take off completely. And then it's basically making two games in one, which obviously takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And the other problem with that is, say, if a person enjoyed the game only enough to play once, then it means all your hard work would not be seen by that player. So that's why we get the uh, alternate endings by our beginning choices sort of sort of thing. Oh yeah, by the way, in case you guys were wondering, 
No, it's not Refrain, it's a completely separate game. I created Refrain in my senior year of high school and going into my freshman year of college. And I only know that because, well, I was inspired by another, the anime, and, uh, and like a whole bunch of anime developed by Key, which is a company that, well, creates those visual novels and anime in return. So like Little Busters, Clan Ed, that sort. But yeah, what I wanted to say was that in the time in between of those two main games, and even all the games just onwards up to Caster's Trap, I kept falling for the trap of making games too long and having, well, games with too many splitting stories because I love having options in games, but I soon learned that um, there's, there's so much a person can do with creating their first game. So if you actually look back to my RPG Maker tutorial, the number one thing I stress so very hard is do not make a game that's too long because I don't want you guys to fall for the same trap that I did. I'm a nice person. I know. <laughs> but do not worry, I'm not gonna fall for that same trap with my current game that I'm making. Instead, it, it has separate modes, but each mode is rather short. It's, it's mostly the creating your own assets that's going to take the most amount of time. But I think that aside, it'll be pretty smooth sailing. All right. I think that answers the questions, and I think that answers all the questions. So guys, thank you. Thank you so much for all the wonderful questions and just, well, being curious about me because it makes me feel proud to tell you a little bit about myself and as cheesy as that sounds, I enjoy letting the world know who I am. I am the Yodi. I am a content creator on the side. <laughs> Alright guys, again, thank you so much for asking all the questions and thank you so much for the 1000 subscribers and, and... I'll see you in the next video. Till then, guys. Ciao. Guess what? My camera's about to run out of batteries. I'm talking too long again. Do -do -do. I'm Super Dude. Here, watch me fly. Whoosh. Ow. I'm okay.